Hello! There are two signs that Alex Murdoch had hidden rage. When Alex Murdoch was being cross-examined, he was asked why he went to the kennels when he hadn't wanted to go. I just had a shower. No more. When, when you go to the kennel, you always end up at the shop, the dogs are running around, you always going to end up doing more work. Mm -hmm. All right? It's hot, I'd already had a shower, I didn't want to go to the kennel. I understand that. If these murders were planned ahead of time, then presumably he wanted to go down to the kennels because he planned to then kill his family. But nevertheless, I think he's pointing out a pattern to us. So why'd you change your mind? Because Maggie wanted me to. All right. So you thought about it for a few minutes and then decided to go down there? I don't think I sat and contemplated, am I going to go, am I going to go? Uh, mm -hmm. I think that, like many things Maggie wanted me to do, if I didn't do it at first, I ended up doing it. It's the way he says the second sentence straight after he said he didn't want to go. Here's what he seems to me to be saying. Like many things Maggie wanted me to do, if I didn't want to do it, I ended up doing it. It's hot, I'd already had a shower, I didn't want to go to the kennel. So why'd you change your mind? I think that, like many things Maggie wanted me to do, if I didn't do it at first, I ended up doing it. There's a pattern that Alex Murdoch was aware he was involved with, where his wife would want him to do things, he didn't want to do them, but he would end up doing them. So somehow what she wanted would continually come before what he wanted. So he seems to be this self-sacrificing husband, somebody who finds his wife's feelings to be more important than his own. What was that really about? Given the fact that he has stolen from all of these people, from a paraplegic, you know, from people in the most desperate of circumstances, we can tell that he isn't this lovely, caring, self-sacrificing kind of person. He isn't someone who genuinely believes that other people's feelings should come before his own. So who is he then? What is going on here? Let's look at another example. Knowing Alec for 30 years, do you, you, you develop an assessment of his relationship with his family, Maggie, Paul, and Buster? He always seemed to be devoted to everything. Their ball games, their, he, he would aggravate the hell out of me when you'd be in a deposition and they would call and he'd answer it and you know, you'd be in a meeting or whatever and he always took their calls. Whereas my wife and my children never called me unless it was a true emergency, and right. Alec took their calls whether it was a they needed you know a gallon of milk or you know they had something important to tell him. I mean he always took their calls. So the guy who is talking about this, one of Alex Murdoch's partners in the law firm, is a guy who does come across as really genuine. He put work first during work hours, you know, assuming it wasn't an emergency, he wasn't going to pick up the phone, he was focused on work and his family understood and respected that. So the relationship he had with his family was a boundaried one. He didn't give what he couldn't give. He put his needs first when it was reasonable to do so. That's how a genuine relationship works. Each person has their own needs, they have their own boundaries, and they somehow manage to meet in the middle. Alex Murdoch's relationship with his family was different from this. He felt that he needed to show them that their needs came before his. That was the way he related to them. And that was obviously what they came to expect because they were ringing him during the working day. A covert narcissist is somebody who appears to be a follower, somebody who gives everybody around them lots of power. They believe that the only way they're gonna be liked and valued is if they give of themselves constantly, if they let other people make the decisions, if they make the other person's feelings seem more important. And then, of course, they don't trust that person. They feel taken advantage of. They resent that person. And so there's all of this anger underneath the surface that is going to, at some point, come out. They don't take responsibility for themselves. So they don't take responsibility for the fact that they are the ones always instigating this behaviour. They're the ones 
leading the other person to be the leader. <laughs> you know, they are the ones always offering of themselves and insisting that they give more. So they put that person in an impossible position. Giving too much boosts the covert narcissist's sense of entitlement. So the more they give, the more they believe they're entitled to. They then have to take that back. They have to make sure that the power is equal again as they see it. Except it never really is because they feel entitled to more. <laughs> you know, to make sure the other person is punished for what they've done. Paul Murdoch didn't become a lawyer. And you can tell how important it would have been to Alex Murdoch for his son to have become one because he tries so hard to get Buster to go back to law school after he's kicked out for cheating. So Alex Murdoch has this son who is living off him. He gets to use the place like a massive hunting playground, apparently. You know, there's all these woods to hunt in, there's um, all these guns to use, and there's a lodge that he can stay in with his friends. And so Alex Murdoch is being um, lived off, you know, by his son, by his wife who wants to buy yet another property, you know, and he has to tell her that they can't afford it. That's not that long before he ends up killing her. So he's got these people living off him who always want more. Paul Murdoch always indulging in alcohol and parties. Everything is allowed. Everything is allowed. He's allowed to get really drunk. Apparently from the age of 14, he's allowed to drink. He's become ill from it. He can't manage himself. He can't manage his emotions. He can't manage his body because apparently his, uh, it seems like his liver is in trouble. So Alex is giving and giving and he's not getting stuff back. You know, he's not getting a son who reliably will just go out there and look impressive for the Murdochs. He's getting a son who just takes and takes. He's got a wife who takes and takes and wants more. All this money that he has been bringing in and all these lies he's been feeling like he has to tell to keep her interested, to keep her loving him, to keep everything together. He has to always keep up this fake front and pretend everything's okay, pretend all of the money is okay. And she hires a forensic accountant to go through the finances, to go through the money he has been bringing in and what he has been doing with it to find out if things really are okay because she has her suspicions. Imagine how that would feel to a covert narcissist, to somebody who is used to having to give more than they want to give, who believes that they, that they are actually above that person they're giving to, that they shouldn't have to do that. They already resent them for that. And now this person has the nerve to actually look at their finances when Maggie isn't earning any of her own money and she's looking, she's, she's suspicious, she has employed somebody else to look at what he's really doing. Imagine the shame for a covert narcissist especially. Everything they do is about trying to get beyond their shame, trying to believe that they are okay. And the only way they are okay is to have this false persona. So when you're being shown up by your wife, by another person looking in, somebody who's used to investigating crimes, by your son and by just three days later, it would have been a whole court looking into his finances because a hearing for the boat case was gonna be held just three days after Maggie and Paul ended up being murdered. So someone who'd spent his whole life running away from shame was now faced with bucket loads of it. And this is after his son Paul has repeatedly found pills he's hidden and shown him up to his wife for lying, which has felt so humiliating. And all of that sacrificing that he feels he's done for Maggie with having to keep hiding things, as the prosecutor says, you know, keep going on this treadmill, constantly trying to get money in order to cover his tracks. So the money he stole isn't being noticed by people. 
all of this stress and pressure on Alex Murdoch all the time in order to keep his family okay with him, the people at work okay with him, his reputation okay, his, his wider family still the impressive Murdochs. He's doing all of this and still his wife isn't happy. She still believes she has the right to get somebody else to look into his finances. For someone like Alex Murdoch, that is going to feel really, um, as we say in England, out of order. <laughs> you know, it's going to feel really rude. It's going to feel like she is entitled because they're always projecting. Um, covert narcissist and he's not just a covert narcissist you know I think we have to add to that that he has these traits of antisocial personality disorder you know he doesn't respect the law clearly he exploits people he has no remorse he's charismatic you know and good at luring people in he has poor impulse control he is an addict He's obviously completely irresponsible and he blames other people. He gives other people responsibility for his own problems. And we've already seen that in the way that he talked about, um, you know, I, I covered it in the last video when he talked about how he'd had to invest more money than he'd planned to in someone else's business and therefore he owed him. On top of that, he's obviously a compulsive liar to the point where you wonder, well, what is true when he's talking in court? You wonder, is this part coincidentally true or is this just another lie? And not only is Paul not going to bother to become a lawyer, but on top of that, he's also gone and crashed their boat, killed someone and potentially not only ruined the family's reputation, people are apparently already talking about them in town in a really negative way. But on top of that, he's costing them a hell of a lot of money. They want $40 million. That's what the family of the deceased girl are looking for. You know, that's what their lawyer has said he's going to try and get them. And so he's given Paul everything that he could, you know, that he's given him um, no rules. This is another downside of a covert narcissist parent, you know, because they want people to like them so much, they can't be responsible. They can't give children boundaries. And so he's given his kid no boundaries. His kid has become an alcoholic. And now on top of that, he's about to take $40 million worth of his father's money. I think that is how Alex Murdoch may have seen all of this, you know, because that's how a covert narcissist sees it, as the, this entitled little brat who I've given everything to is taking all of it from me. And it's not fair. And, and so I have the right now to make sure I get all of that back and more, even though all through Paul's life, his father would have let him believe that his behaviour was okay. He wanted him to think he was a great dad. But the power he gave to other people always came with strings attached. He always had an agenda. I'm going to look more at that in the next video. So if you're around somebody who makes you feel like you're always on holiday, you know, as if all of your responsibilities have been taken off your shoulders and they're just taking care of everything. They want to do so much, but then you start to realise they're actually quite controlling, you know, or you start to notice that they give passive aggressive little digs at you. If you notice that they're only comfortable in that role where you're leading and they're following, but that somehow you get punished for that in the end, then a red flag is staring you in the face. Please take note of it. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.